Greetings. Today is more of a vlog. I want to talk about my day yesterday because, you know what, it was just one of those days that turned out to be a lot more interesting than I thought it was going to, or a lot more complicated. So if you notice in the thumbnail, there's a picture of a car. That's my new car. It's actually a used car, but it's new for me. It's a 2014 Cadenza. I decided it was time to buy a new car with my wife's help, of course, because she had to convince me to do it. After I realized that I'd already spent $2,000 in repairs on my car, which was a 2005 Kia Amante, and it was just April. <laughs> it wasn't going to get better. And I needed to make sure I had a reliable vehicle, you know, to be driving my mother around. You know, if we got stuck somewhere and we couldn't reach my wife, yeah, I got AAA, but, you know, now I've got mom sitting in the car, and that would be a bad thing. So I went and got it on Saturday. It was a fluke because it wasn't even a car I was looking for, but it's a car I've always wanted. So I was able to get a good price for it, and I went today to pick it up. And the thing is, it's got all this stuff in it. I mean, talk about a souped-up car. It's got all the bells and whistles, extra gadgets. I still haven't come close to figuring it all out. I think I got 50% so far. So that's kind of cool. Anyway, the one thing about a car is that when you're looking to buy one, it's almost like buying a house. You have to sign a bunch of papers. And the thing is, I walked in with a cashier's check, so I'm not even financing. And it still took about 30 minutes to fill out all the paperwork. So we get in the car, and the guy has to come with us because at this particular place, they don't fill the car before you get it. They fill the car after you get it, and then you go over to the gas station, they fill it up. So we go do that, and now it's my car. And I got to tell you, it's six-cylinder, and it felt beautiful. It felt beautiful when I test drove it. It felt beautiful now. So it was wonderful. So then we decide we're going to go to a place called Installations Unlimited. I know about Installations Unlimited because it's been in the same location for at least close to 30 years, and I know the owner, and I know his wife. I went to high school with both of them. So I go there because I want to get a remote car starter. It, my wife has had one for years, and it works great in the, in the wintertime. You know, I live in Syracuse, central New York. It's cold and snowy, so it's nice to be able to have the car warm when you get in, especially with my mother. But it's also great in the summer if it's sitting outside in the heat. You can turn it on and let the air at least cool things down a little bit. So I go over there to, you know, look at these things. And I looked online first because I really knew nothing about, you know, these remote car starters. And they had 144 of them. I said, my God, how is someone supposed to go through 144 car starters? No idea. So I show up there and I talk to this guy. And he says, well, you have a button starter in your car, which, you know, like I said, the car souped up. So he said, there's really only three good choices for your type of car. So he's showing me these things. In the meantime, Scott comes walking by. Hey, how you doing? So he shake hands and he tells the guy, look, whatever he wants, you give him the owner's discount. Because I've known him for a good long time. Like I said, went to high school together. I said, Thanks, Scott. So <laughs> I end up picking the one in the middle. And it was interesting because the number one seller in this particular range happened to be something on a smartphone where he said you could remote car start your car or lock it or whatever no matter where you are in the world all you have to do is use an app on your smartphone and I said who would want that and he says this is our number one seller well I decided I didn't want that plus I read that you have to pay for a subscription for the app I didn't want that so next Wednesday I'll be going in and getting this remote car starter and I never really thought much about it before, although I mentioned it to my wife just in passing one day. Do you think I should get a remote car starter for my car, the one I just gave up? And she said, no, this car's too old. Don't even think about it. So there you go. After that, I had to go with my wife downtown. She's starting a part-time gig. Actually, that's wrong. She's starting an interim gig at a hospital in town next week. She had to get some, some work done. So we go up there, and now I get to just drive the car around, and I'm loving it this thing. However, I don't know how long she's going to be in there, so I don't really go all that far. And I'm driving around, and eventually she contacts me and lets me know she's ready to go. I go get her, and it turns out she needed to have another lab procedure done. And I'm thinking, what is wrong with the people who basically contacted you, they set everything up for you to start, and they don't know their jobs. They didn't think to ask, is everything done? Supposed to start Monday, 
This is Wednesday, and they don't ask everything. This is sometimes one of the issues that people who travel for work or people who go in and do, you know, I'm going to call it temp work. It's, it's full time, but you go in to do something else for someone else. And sometimes these companies don't know their own jobs. They don't know to ask all those questions. I'm lucky as a consultant because that doesn't happen to me. I mean, it just doesn't. Because I'm someone who asks, okay, look, I need to know every single thing up front. I need to talk to the client because I always want to talk to the client before I go anywhere. Of course, these days I'm not going anywhere because of my mother, but still, I want to talk to the client, find out really what their needs are, what they're going to request of me, what they think they need. I want it all done way up front. I want to know what the rental car is going to be. I want to know how much I'm going to get paid for mileage. <laughs> I want to know it all. But see, I have more control of that being a consultant. She doesn't have that kind of control. So we come back to where we live in our area town because we were going to eat this nice restaurant downtown, but that's now thrown out because now we got to do something else. So we go to this place and she has to have this test done and we're in there talking with people and it turns out that she and the lady who took their information, they made a connection that could turn into a business connection. So that's kind of cool because you never know when that's going to happen. And I'm not going to get into saying what my wife's business is because she really doesn't want me getting into it. Although one of these days she may say, go ahead, talk about it. I'm good with it. So then we leave there. We decide to go to this Italian restaurant just down the street and I get lasagna. I love lasagna. Almost nobody messes up lasagna, especially if it's meat lasagna. So I get that. She orders something. They bring these garlic knots, which are really wonderful. <laughs> I've got to tell you the truth. And I asked for real butter. I've never been able to figure out this thing about oil with some stuff in it, and you're supposed to dip it and eat it. My mind just says, you shouldn't be eating oil. I, I don't know. This is me. So we eat this. Neither one of us finishes our meal. We both get our stuff put in containers. We go to the door. And the winds have kicked up. And I didn't know it was coming. She said she knew that there was something that was going to be coming. We've had wind gusts of up to 60 miles an hour. <laughs> it's just been ugly. And it was snowing, which in our area isn't normally out of place. You know, so far we've got 155 inches of snow this year. But what was weird about it is it was still in the 40s. So this shows you how cold the wind had to be for us to be getting snow. And so then we, you know, had to make a couple of other stops with this wind blowing all over the place. We finally get home and I was exhausted. I needed, a, you know, I told my wife I need 25 minutes just to lay down and hopefully I'll get a nap. And I slept 17. And then I got up realizing, OK, I've got to figure out how to set the garage door opener. And it turns out that there are these instructions for setting a garage door opener so that, you know, you can do this and not have to use the fob, but you have to use a fob to set it. Took me five minutes, but I got that set. So now it's the idea of putting everything that I want back into the new car because we took everything out of the old car. And it's amazing what you will find <laughs> that you have in your car when you decide it's time to really go through it and pull things out. So I had duplicates of a lot of things, which my wife now has. Uh, I ended up having six umbrellas in my car. <laughs> I don't have any idea why it's six. I have kept three, which may seem weird, but I kept my two Syracuse University umbrellas and I kept a red one because red is my favorite color and Syracuse University, I support them. Although I went to Oswego State, which is in Oswego, New York, and a friend of mine didn't know that that's where I went. She just assumed that I went to Syracuse University because I talk about Syracuse all the time. Well, I live in Syracuse, but I went to Oswego State. There you go. Now, it's time to go get my mother. And I was betting she wasn't going to notice that I got a new car, even though my other car was black and my new car was white. And it also turned out, and I, you know what? I don't have this kind of vision. I don't know why, why I didn't. My other car, the Kia Monte, was this really big luxury car. I thought the Cadenza that I was getting was a big luxury car. It turns out it's shorter, it's not as wide, and it's considered a sporty car. I had no clue, no idea whatsoever. So I wondered if my mother would notice. <laughs> and I also wondered if she would notice because, like I told you, the winds were kicking everyone's behind. I mean, they'd knock trees down in the area. Some places lost electricity. 
So I just wondered. She noticed immediately. Hey, is this a new car? I was like, all right. Now, five minutes later in the car, she had no clue that we were in a new car. <laughs> and by the time I got back home and we got out of the car, she had no memory that I had a different car. But at that moment, she noticed it. And that's one of those weird things. I mentioned in a previous video some time ago that my mother has dementia, so you're never really sure what she's going to retain or remember. This she happened to remember. And then that's pretty much it. The rest of the night, I've been in the house. I'm, I recorded the video. I've written a couple of articles because basically my day was shot getting any real work done. And it's just nice to be able to say, you know, I've gotten some things done during a day. Now I don't feel like I wasted it. Although it was a very interesting day. I don't have a lot of interesting days like this, so I'm glad to be able to tell you this. Like I said, this is a vlog. This is nothing educational. The next one just might be. As a matter of fact, I already know the topic for the next video. But I did say in the first video for in April, or the first video of the month, that sometimes I'm going to tell you something that's going to teach you something, and sometimes it's going to be a vlog. My name is Mitch Mitchell. Hope you enjoyed this story. Got any questions? Just ask. Y'all take care.